Hello, my strong, strong friends. I received this comment in my last YouTube video and I wanted to make a full postpartum video. I also went on Instagram and asked y'all to ask me any postpartum questions that you may have. So I'm gonna to try to hit as many as possible. It is 7 a.m. I was planning to maybe do a 6 a.m. run before she woke up, but she woke up <gasps> at 6.15. She's been waking up at 7.30 for the past couple of days, but you just gotta be flexible, okay? Mm. Isn't that right? Mm. That's right. Let's play. Based on my questions, there are about six different categories that people are most interested in hearing about. First up, lifestyle changes, like how do you get to the gym? Second, the physical changes that happen during pregnancy and after postpartum. Next is body image, which I think is probably the most important thing, like that is above all. I'll also timestamp these so that you guys can skip around. Four is nursing and milk supply. Five are specific training and exercise questions. And then six, nutrition questions. I'm gonna to try to hit as many questions as I can in those six categories. First up is lifestyle. Biggest question in this category is how do you find time to work out? As you noticed, I was planning on working out earlier before she woke up, but then she just woke up early. That happens literally all the time. The moment I feel like I have a routine, the moment I feel like I have some predictability with her schedule, it changes, <laughs> it changes. I did find a good stretch of time where I was Waking up around five, getting to the gym, I would literally, I had those portable nursing um, pumps, so I could put those in my bra on the way to the gym, work out at like a local rec center, and then go home. That way I could for sure get my workout in. That was the only schedule that I found that really, really worked. Now, also you have to keep in mind when people ask me this question, it's a little bit different. My job includes a lot of different things, but this is one of them. So working out sometimes is part of my job. Now I have to schedule in that workout time during my work day. So I do get the benefit of doing that. However, I almost wish I could just get up at five and get it in and then be done with my workout because my days are really, really stressful now. <laughs> I mean, they've always had some amount of stress, but now I have this human over here who right now is looking at me eating strawberries and there is this pull like when I'm doing things like working out or working like my job when I'm doing those things someone else is taking care of her obviously and there is this pull inside of me that knows and this is a fact I know this there is no one better suited to take care of her than me period and you all my moms out there, there is no one better suited to take care of your child than you. And so I'm left with this guilt of going working or like doing extra work to try to get ahead on things, doing extra work so that my business is successful, doing extra work so that people like you are informed and, you know, have something like this to motivate you through postpartum. It's hard. <laughs> it is this poll. That is the biggest change that is the biggest like psychological just mind fuck to be honest because i never thought i would feel this way i always thought i would happily drop emerald off at the nanny and be fine with it totally not the case totally not the case at all so anyway how do you find the time to find the gym i would get up early before anyone else also mind you i do have help with ryan so there's another parent here we have a pretty 50-50, as close to 50-50 schedule as we can. So that really helps. Do I have that many tips for this section? I don't know, but I would say the thing that I found the most success in was definitely that super early morning schedule, pump on the way to the gym, throw it in a cooler. That's when I felt most productive. Of course, I can't really do that because no one was following me at five in the morning to the gym. I can't really ask my employees to like film my workouts during that time. So it doesn't make sense for my job. But if I could, I'd be there. And I wish I could go to bed at 9 p.m., but I'm on my computer working because that's when she's asleep. Yeah, everything revolves around you. It's true. I love you. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I totally forgot I'm doing this like vlog style. I just ate my breakfast. Well, like half of a breakfast. <laughs> I just had a piece of white toast. I use the Dave's Killer Bread White Done Right Toast. 
It's so good. And then I had peanut butter on top of that just before my run. And then Emerald had eggs, ricotta cheese. She didn't eat any of her eggs. What's up with that? You usually like them. I reheated eggs from yesterday. That's probably why. And she had strawberries and a little bit of shredded cheese. Very good. Mwah. Let's clean you up. All right, y'all. I just finished a two mile run. I I felt like I had a really good pace on it. I'm, and although I wasn't intentionally doing good pace, I did have guests come with me. So we have to go because it's getting hot. It's nine and it's like 90 some degrees now. Look who came with me. Hi. And dad. Hi. It is nice to have had them come to the park because my run is only 20 minutes, but if I were to drive here, get ready, drive here, go by myself, it would be, I would be gone for like an hour, hour and a half maybe. So it's nice that they came so we could spend a little bit of time together. We have Emerald's nanny comes at 10, so it's 9.36. Hey guys, are you pregnant? Are you trying to get pregnant? Are you postpartum? Probably because you're watching this video. I just want to pop in real quick and remind you guys that I do have a prenatal and a postpartum program. It's called Plus One. Definitely check it out. I'm going to give you a lot of education in this video and have a lot of free education here on YouTube and on my Instagram. Check out all those resources before you join any program. I am a certified pre and postnatal coach. So I'm certified to coach those of you who are preggy. So I made a program so that it's affordable because um, I know it's a crazy time in your life. So I combined the education that I think is required to continue strength training and the actual strength program. So we guide you through the entire pregnancy, even in the trying to conceive phase and of course postpartum and give you the tools that you need so that you can train, but also train really confidently because I know it can be you know, you're inundated with so much information. It can be really confusing time. It can feel like you don't have time to do any training, um, but we try to put everything in one place so that you can train confidently. Check it out, plus one, I'll link it down below. I am in between meetings today. It's a little bit of a crazy one, but I wanted to come to the original comment that someone left, aka girl, <laughs> does that mean Akron? I don't know. Left on my last video, which gave me the inspiration for creating this video. There is a lot to unpack in your message, but let me just read it. Love your videos, love your workout program, been doing it for about six months. Would you consider doing a video since it's been a while on your postpartum body? We're gonna do a physique check-in, so I'll catch you up to date on that. It's very shallow and slightly vain, but I have a ridiculous fear of having children and losing slash ruining the body that I've worked so hard for. She's a weightlifter and a hiker. And the abs that I've worked decades to have visible. I feel you. You seem to look exactly how you did before your beautiful baby. How much in your opinion was genetics? How much was due to being in excellent shape beforehand? How much was due to your program after? fully aware your body changes, but at 32, I believe you're right around there. I'm 34, so yes, I did have my baby at age 33, or I was about to turn 33. Am I doomed? How do you do it? Thank you. P.S. I've watched every video you have in pregnancy, and oh goodness, thank you so much. First of all, you know, I shared this message on Instagram, and you know, I had someone say like, oh, that message sounds so like scarily diet culture. And yes, I think some of your concerns around body image are something that we'll talk about later in the video, but we're gonna focus on the physical changes that I went through and some of your questions, like how much is your shape before pregnancy? How much is what you did during pregnancy and how much is it what you did after? So I wanna focus on physique here and talk about it objectively and deal with body image later because that's a whole nother topic and we will get to that, but I'm gonna answer your questions. So let's do a physique check-in. Should I close this? No, I was zooming in on the cowboy boots. Okay, Ryan's gonna help me record this. First, let's do a weigh-in. Um, haven't done one since my last physique check-in. She's like... Is that 139.4? 139.4, that's after. All I've had today is a little bit of food and a protein shake um, and lots of water. So that is runner May. That is working out twice a day because I'm on my current challenge. That is post pizza last night and dumplings on the weekend. <laughs> True. Like. But I think just my general activity level is far higher than it has been. I'll also say I recently have been dealing with, I don't want to say health issues, but recently I took antibiotics when I probably didn't need to, and they made me extremely sick. Extremely sick. Get it? 
puking. So I was dealing with that, which might affect my weight right now. But overall, this is the best I've looked in a long time. Prior to pregnancy, this is the best I've looked. There are some physical differences that are evident. My boobs, first of all. I'm not gonna complain about how they look, but I'm about a C cup. And my boobs, just when I don't have a bra on, are just a little bit more deflated than they were before. Now I always had little saggy titties. That's just who I am, okay? But definitely, just because of breastfeeding, rapid change in the size of your breasts, especially early in pregnancy when I was breastfeeding more often, and when my milk was getting full, when my boobs were like getting full, your boobs are big D's, double D's early in the day, and then they deflate to A cups later in the day. That's just a reality of pregnancy and, or postpartum rather. And for me, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm more of a big booty kind of gal. <laughs> Basically, as postpartum progressed, every day, every month, every week, I started feeling more and more like myself. Someone asked, did you ever feel like your body was not yours? And I think there are two sides to that question. One, dealing with the trauma, the physical trauma of giving birth, you sort of do feel like you are not in your own body. And then two, especially if you're breastfeeding or just like doing any kind of child care, you do feel like your body does is not owned to you. You do not own. This is out of your hands. You're keeping someone alive with your body. So it is easy to feel like the child owns especially the boobies, okay? <laughs> As postpartum progressed for me, I remember having thoughts of feeling like, now I feel like myself. Like, I'm starting to feel more like me. And that was physically, especially after, and I had a vaginal birth. So dealing with the trauma of having childbirth, as time progressed, I started feeling more and more like myself, especially with my pelvic floor, especially with that healing specifically. That is something to where, yes, you're right. You don't feel like your body is your own in both ways. You don't feel like your body is your own, period. It's not like what you're used to feeling like. And then you don't feel like you're the captain of the ship, right? So that is just some a sacrifice that honestly for me was not hard to make. I feel like I have, my priority is always the baby. So whatever changes my body goes through, I'm kind of fine with those sacrifices. And I would say the person who's asking the original question, it sounds like maybe you're not a mother yet or you're not a parent yet. I think you might surprise yourself with the sacrifices that you're willing to make when you have a baby. Mm -hmm. At least that's my experience. And like I said, I did have a vaginal birth. So C-section, there are different physical changes that you undergo and those personally, I can't speak to. Now, education-wise, I can talk about some of those changes and approaching exercise postpartum, but we'll get to that in that later section. Mm -hmm. You said sacrifice a few times, and I feel like it's less of a sacrifice and more of a trade-off. There wasn't even like a weight or question around it, you know what I mean? Yes, that's how I feel. I don't ever feel like, oh, I have to wake up. Oh, I'm so tired. It's just kind of what you do. And I think I am generally a positive person, and I wanted very badly to have a baby. So those things might factor in my approach to what I have to do, but it's never a, oh, I have to do this, or, oh God, she's woken up again. It's just, my baby needs me. It's what you do. It's not a sacrifice, like it has none of the negative implications of a <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah. It is just, it's what you do. I had a few questions on diastasis recti, so let's talk about it. First, let's um, test me and see how I'm doing. Up to 100% of pregnancies will result in separating of the abdomen, stretching of the linea alba, okay? Virtually everyone will deal with this as you make room for baby. Basically, what happens is your abs separate as you grow, right? Um, so there are some considerations with exercise that I'll talk about in the exercise section of this video, but you can test your DR and test that gap that you have, mind you. I am one year postpartum and counting. Right now, I have very little DR. Maybe a little tiny bit um, less tightness as I did prior to getting pregnant, but it's, 
it's back together. And, for and me, what are you feeling for? Are you feeling for spacing, like physical gap? In yes. Between? So basically you can feel, sorry, I have long nails, so it's not very <laughs> um, effective. But basically I can feel the gap between my abs, my like six pack muscles. So I can feel the gap between mm. them. And to check for DR, you want to check for deepness, looseness of the skin and separation of the abs. So right now I don't really have much separation, but I can feel a little bit of a gap there where my finger can kind mm. of sink in. So if I didn't have these stupid long nails, you could kind of test it and kind of measure like up to a knuckle. So I have a video on testing diastasis recti during pregnancy and after pregnancy. And that's something that, especially if you feel weak in your core muscles, that's something that you do wanna monitor and maybe adjust certain exercises that you choose throughout pregnancy and postpartum. A lot of this might be genetic. It also has a lot to do with the size of the baby and how far your abs stretched or separated apart. Now, there are exercises that you can do and exercises that I did all throughout pregnancy and early postpartum that helps increase the strength of your transverse abdominus, which is a muscle that helps bring those abs together. So your transverse abdominus is called a corset muscle and think about it wraps from the spine all the way around to the linea alba, which working on that TVA or transverse abdominus muscle can help bring those six pack muscles together, especially when you're postpartum. I have videos on that and it's included in plus one in my prenatal and postpartum programming. So that's something to check out, but you can find a ton of free videos and I have free videos about working that TVA during pregnancy and postpartum. That probably has a lot to do with the severity of your DR and the healing of your DR. Last thing I'll add, regardless of how postpartum you are, you can always increase the strength of that TVA. You can always increase your core strength. Those are things that even if you're three plus years postpartum, those are things that you can revisit and start to strengthen and maybe see some results. Another physique change people always ask me about, oh my gosh, stretch marks. How do I avoid stretch marks? Lotion, any kind of lotion. There's no research that shows one ingredient for lotion is better or worse. Generally keeping the area moisturized and then also staying hydrated is gonna be the best thing for preventing stretch marks. Unfortunately, they're genetic. I have puberty stretch marks on my boobs still to this day and on my thighs still to this day. I did not get any during pregnancy in my abs. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I severely bloat. And also <laughs> I've had weight fluctuations. My highest weight outside of pregnancy was 165 pounds. During pregnancy, the heaviest I got was 185 pounds. Generally, I sit at like about 145 now. So I had a 40 pound gain during pregnancy, but that was only 20 pounds off my all time high in regular just living Meg life. So I think those factors all contribute to my experience with stretch marks, with all kinds of changes that happen throughout pregnancy. Everyone is going to be different, unfortunately. Other than looking at what your mother went through during pregnancy and after pregnancy, it's hard to predict what's gonna happen to you. Are there any brands or products that um, can specifically help? Because I feel like I've seen them marketed. Buy the cheapest lotion you can get or buy whatever lotion you like. Last physique change I wanna talk about, not my biceps, it's my booty. <laughs> Ba, 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 ba. Very common. Sadly, very common. Probably not the worst thing to happen to you postpartum, but lots of people report losing their glutes. I am one of them. During pregnancy, I avoided really heavy hip thrusts. I just didn't like the way the barbell felt knowing that it was that close to my pelvis. I didn't like it. I did hip thrusts, but a lot of times it was body weight. A lot of times it was with dumbbells, which you can only go so heavy. I lost some glute mass during pregnancy and then postpartum. This is your regular position. This is how you, this is how you be during postpartum. Oh, with the, yeah, the donut. Yeah, with like a little, yeah, a little thing here, baby. And I'm like, Ryan, get me some water. That's your state in postpartum, which contributes to some loss of mass. Obviously, early postpartum, you can't really lift heavy weights anyway, so you might experience some muscle loss. Lots of people report feeling it mostly in their glutes. So whenever I started to heal and 
transition to upright movement and then transition to adding some resistance, I focus a little bit more heavily than I usually do on building my glutes back. Now, it was a progress. I feel like I'm back to where I started, maybe even a bit better um, or bigger rather, but lots of people report feeling that. Lots of people report having that experience. Let's talk about weight loss. And that'll be my last thing talking about physique changes because obviously you gain some weight, you gain some body fat during pregnancy. I jokingly referred to progress of pregnancy as kind of like a bulk. So if that helps you, then that helps you. For me, I never once in postpartum said, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna get back to this specific number in my head. I did, however, nutrition wise and exercise wise set process goals for myself, meaning that instead of having an outcome in mind, I instead focus on the daily and weekly habits that I can do that I know would result in weight loss and would result in fat loss. For example, I focused on prepping some of my meals. I focused on eating out a little bit less. I focused on cooking more at home. I also focused on ensuring that I got at least three to four training sessions in per week. And then most recently, I incorporated some running. So now, instead of having those three to four sessions, I'm exercising more like seven times mm -hmm. per week, um, two sessions in, in some days. Mm -hmm. So those were the goals that I set for myself. I did not focus on weight loss as an outcome. That is something that I've always done throughout my career, if you're familiar with me or familiar with any of my videos. And I think that perspective definitely helped me in my postpartum journey to not get caught up in a lot of the concerns that it seems like this person might have. Again, we're gonna talk about body image in a later section. I'm gonna touch on that entirely mm -hmm. on its own, but just physique mm -hmm. changes and weight mm -hmm. loss and losing your pregnancy weight. That is the approach that I personally yeah. took and that is the approach that I would suggest most people should take. Your activity level, like you talked about nutrition, you talked about your exercising more, but you're still probably sitting at a desk 60 hours a week or 40 hours a week. Like you're outside of those runs, you're you're closing your rings now. You're probably getting mm -hmm. like 10,000 steps, but it's not like you went from working a labor job and then adding on sessions. I'd say I work a little bit less at my desk now, especially because mm -hmm. we're focused on YouTube mm -hmm. and we're focused on doing some of my work is creating content for you right. guys, obviously. Okay. So I'm probably at my desk maybe, yeah, like 25, 30 hours a week, which I know a lot of people can't relate with. A lot mm. of people are stuck at their desks. I'm not just like 100% stay at home mom who has a nanny, <laughs> or like I'm not 100% an influencer. I have a semi-normal job and semi-normal week schedule. I'm working from Monday through Friday, 10 to six, basically. 